In this video, we'll set up a new vendor account. This can be done from either procurement and sourcing from all vendors or accounts payable, again, all vendors. And the information that we'll be specifying here, we'll create a new vendor, the information will default onto invoices and purchase orders that we create for this vendor. We can enter the vendor account number manually, or it will be auto-generated if that's set up in the system. The type can either be organization or person. We could enter an employee as a person to reimburse expenses to that employee as a vendor. The name, if it's not already in the global address book, which it isn't, a new record will be created. We can enter a different search name if required. And we see here that the vendor group is necessary. We need to assign a vendor group for the new record to be created. On the address fast tab, we can click add. And on the new addresses screen, we enter the relevant details. As this is currently the only address, it will default to primary address. We can enter as many addresses as required. For example, we can add a different address to remit to, which will print on checks. We'll do the same for contact information, clicking add and entering a new contact which can be any of these, obviously. Under the miscellaneous fast tab, we can assign the vendor to a buyer group. And if we have one set up, a vendor rebate group. Here we also see the current vendor hold status. We'll look at that uh, a bit more later. Under the Vendor Profile Fast tab, we will check the Bid Only box if the vendor has submitted an RFQ proposal but has not yet been approved for purchases. And various other specifics can be noted if we know them. I'll just show you the fields in the Purchasing the Demographics Fast tab. Before we move on to the invoice and delivery, here we can assign invoice and delivery groups if we have set them up. Under the purchase order defaults fast tab, we have options for default site and warehouse for receiving goods from the vendor. And we also have discount groups if we have them set up. And lastly, payments. Here we can specify default terms and method of payment, schedules and discounts. If I know, for example, we typically pay this vendor by check, I'm going to set that up here. And if I know we are on payment installments, I'm going to put that here and then when that purchase order is invoiced, operations automatically breaks out those invoices in installments. After creating the vendor, we can start using it in transactions or for uh, a specific reason, we can put the vendor on hold for all transactions or just for a specific type. We can set a release date. Uh, we can assign a reason code for the hold and we can apply it to all legal entities. Here, we can add the vendor to other legal entities and we can apply holds on a per entity basis.